I call myself the humble homemaker because because my house is not my dream house it's not perfect but I'm not going to neglect cleaning my kitchen because it's not my dream kitchen I'm not going to neglect cleaning my carpets because I hate carpet and I happy to see you today's video is all about the basics of homemaking I feel like these are some of the basics of homemaking and they're very important so the first one is to create a cleaning list I was so against the idea of writing things down even though I'd written things down my whole life when I hit that adulthood life I stopped caring about my schedule so much and it really started to throw me off and I used to be like yeah spontaneous life but really that spontaneous lifestyle isn't for everybody. It might work for you or your neighbor or another family member, but it doesn't work for everybody. I believe that routine is beneficial for everybody. Get yourself a cleaning schedule and write it out. A cleaning schedule just helps you stay on track, helps you so that you don't miss anything, and it gives you some accountability so that you have something to tackle every single day so that you're not like, well, I think I'm gonna do this today. You can do that, but try and get these things done first and then if you have extra time today, you do these things. What you don't want to do is do every single chore every single day because then you get burnt out on it. That can sometimes lead to you not wanting to do any chores at all. Breaking it down into a cleaning schedule, breaking it down into deep cleaning on certain days, and then break it down to monthly chores, and then break it down to yearly chores, and it will really help you keep your house in order just a little bit easier. The second thing is to find hobbies that pay off. And what I mean by this is hobbies that are beneficial. Now you, you don't have to necessarily make money off of your hobbies, but that is an added bonus. I'm talking about things like knitting and crocheting. You can knit a scarf and you can actually use that and that's a beneficial hobby. Cooking and baking are hobbies because you're feeding your family, obviously. I personally love to make homemade soaps and beauty products. And those pay off because I don't ever have to buy body soaps and I don't ever have to buy beauty products like body exfoliants because I make all of those. I'm also able to make a little bit of money off of those on the side. You will notice that a lot of homemakers are actually what drive sites like Etsy and online businesses because in today's modern world, we as homemakers are able to stay at home, take care of our family, take care of our homes, and also have the ability to, to turn our hobbies into some sort of profit. Now, I don't make a million dollars off of my soaps, but it's nice to have a few extra dollars every now and then for little things here and there. But what are your homemaking hobbies? Let me know in the comments below. The third one is meal planning. Planning out your meals, I sit down and for a couple of weeks at a time, so two, for two weeks at a time, I sit down and I write down what we're having for each night's dinner and I usually try and make enough for leftovers the next day so that I really only have to cook every other night. So planning out your meals takes out that guesswork of what you're gonna make for dinner. It creates that structure in your home so that you know what you're having for dinner. So when your husband leaves for work, you're saying, tonight we're having chicken schnitzel, green beans, and mashed potatoes, okay? And then that gives him something to look forward to while he's at work and then obviously that puts you in the mindset of knowing what's on the calendar, that's what I'm going to be making. I know the meals that we generally cycle through every now and then I'll try a new recipe out, but we, we generally stick with the same 20 recipes and we just cycle through those. About once a month we go to our local butcher, get 25 pounds, sometimes 50 pounds of meat. It's the same pack of meat every single time so we know what we're getting we're getting ground beef we're getting roast we're getting getting our chickens we're getting our chicken quarters we know what we're getting every single time every now and then if there's something extra on sale that's in their little refrigerator section we'll get those we'll get some sausage every now and then or some grass-fed beef patties and then we go to the grocery store and because we are so structured with meal planning grocery shopping hap it, grocery shopping used to be a stressful experience and now we know what we're going in there for we know what we're grabbing everybody pretty much knows this but the whole outside of the grocery store that outside aisle the produce and then 
everything around on the outside is basically where you want to try and stay in the grocery store and that's pretty much where we stay we also I prep my meals so all of our meats we take and I prepare them into freezer bags and I split them up and I write what each one is on there and then I just pull it out of the freezer and some of them are crock pot some of them are not some of them are just regular cooking meals follow my calendar for my meal planning and I and it just works it just really takes out so much stress because meal planning can be a little stressful you know and that's okay but preparing makes it so much easier the fourth one is waking up earlier than everybody else I've always been a morning person as long as I have my seven and a half hours of sleep I am good to go I can wake up at 5 30 in the morning and I am golden I like to wake up earlier than everybody else because I love a quiet house when everybody else is sleeping I love preparing things for my family while they're still sleeping. I have my little morning routine that I do on my own. It consists of me waking up, writing in my journal, or what some people call brain dumping, just letting out every single blabbing thought I have in my mind. Then I do a little bit of scripture reading and studying the Bible. I go work out, I eat breakfast. I, of course, have about three hours, give or take, to myself, which is just really nice to have. The fifth tip I have is to learn how to budget. I was not very good with budgeting when I was younger and I'm still learning about budgeting. I used to be a bad online shopping spender. If I had extra money, I'd be like, oh, well, what can I go buy off of Amazon? Or what can I go order off of this makeup website? Or what can I order off of this clothing website? And I don't really do that anymore. I put myself on a low buy, no buy since July and I have saved a ton of money since doing so. There's all sorts of different budgeting things. If you'd like me to, I can get in, I can do a separate video on how we budget our money, but I'm not gonna tell you how to spend your money. What I do recommend though, is that you sit down with a piece of paper and you write down all of your expenses, every single bill that you have, whether it's a necessity or a want, and then look at that list and see what you could possibly cut out or what you could cut down on and figure out how much money you need per month and then figure out how much more money you would have if you didn't spend your money on all of these little wants on this list. Budgeting just makes you feel more responsible. We are a well-to-do average family and just because we make a decent amount of money does not mean we need to spend a decent amount of money. Saving money is okay and saving money helps in the long term with tons, tons and tons of things. So, save your money. The sixth tip I have is to be grateful for everything you have and be grateful for everything you don't have. And this is such an overly said little piece of life advice, but for homemaking, it can seriously increase your your ability to be a better homemaker because if you're grateful for everything you have you're not going to look around and and wish you had certain things or feel like well my life would be better if i had this or if my kitchen looked this way i call myself the humble homemaker because my house is not my dream house it's not perfect but I'm not going to neglect cleaning my kitchen because it's not my dream kitchen. I'm not going to neglect cleaning my carpets because I hate carpets and I'd rather have hardwood floor in here. It doesn't fit our spending budget right now, so I'm not going to be an ingrate about it. I'm going to be thankful and thank God that I have carpet to walk on. I'm going to be grateful that I have a kitchen to cook in. I'm going to be grateful that I have countertops to prepare food on. I am grateful to be a homemaker. I am grateful to be able to stay at home. Everything you are given in your life as hard as this might sound for some people everything you are given everything you have in your life is all that you need so use it to your advantage use it wisely and be grateful the seventh tip is don't be so hard on yourself but also make sure that you're holding yourself accountable don't beat yourself up because you didn't get everything done on your to-do list but also don't slack because you feel like you need to go and take a bubble bath instead because the other night I burnt food in a pan and I broke a glass dish and I wasn't like oh my gosh I'm not a perfect homemaker I just broke my favorite dish instead I was just like well you know stuff happens it's just a dish it's just some food at least I don't burn food every single night and I moved past it. I was on my phone when I was trying to cook dinner the other night and when I burnt it. And the other thing, I was just moving way too fast around the kitchen trying to multitask and do 10 different things. 
and I broke my dish. So don't be so hard on yourself and hold yourself accountable. And my eighth homemaking tip I had have for you is to stop scrolling on your phone so much. Put your phone down or turn it on airplane mode or put it on silent and only let the important people call you and text you. You can ignore that text message. You can ignore that notification for Instagram. You can ignore your phone while you get your stuff done. And I'm telling you, when you get your stuff done, then you look at your phone, you don't feel so guilty because you got the stuff done. It's kind of like a little reward, you know? It's okay to listen to a, a playlist or a podcast, but I also encourage you to just try and clean and do, get your chores done when there's nothing going on in the background because there might be a time where you just need to get stuff done. You don't have time to scroll through, a, through your podcasts and click on one, or you don't have time to go to music and click on one. And I'm not saying that you should do this all the time, but you should get used to doing it without all that stuff. And if you are interested in just clicking through a quick little playlist for your music, then I will link my Spotify. I have playlists for every decade, and I just have a couple of playlists that are my favorites, and I also have monthly playlists of what I listen to per month. So if you'd like to check that out, the link is below. That completes the, all the tips I have for you homemakers and aspiring homemakers today. I apply these to my life, and sometimes making these videos, I remind myself what is important, what I, need, what I need to do more of, what I need to do less of. But I hope that I'm helping you out in the process of helping me out. If you liked this video, please hit that thumbs up, comment, and of course hit subscribe with the notification bell so that you don't miss my next post. And follow me on Instagram because I am super active there, especially on my stories. I'm off to start preparing dinner for tonight before Cole comes home. So I will see you next time. Bye-bye.